just a heads up while this is going, I can't see the screen at all. So Peggy, I'm gonna be relying on you if any questions come through or if um, there are any issues, just let me know. Done and done. Uh, great, so today we're going to paint and draw some flowers in a vase. And if you just had a thought that said, I can't paint flowers, um, don't worry, you can, because if you can paint blobs that are not perfectly circular, then you can paint flowers. So I'm going to be using, uh, Eunice just mentioned uh, Dr. P.H. Martins, which Eunice, awesome job, way to kick off pride like a freaking unicorn, that was amazing. Oh, sorry, my voice is all nervous. And like, I was sitting here like cool as a cu cucumber until Eunice laid down that last pink color. And then I started getting all poop stomach feelings. So here we are. Um, okay, so I'm using Bombay India ink. And so it's liquid, it's already activated, it's already full color. But unlike the Hydrus uh, watercolor line that they have, which it's archival ink in that the colors and the pigments will last a long time. But if you spilled water on your painting a year after you did it, it would still re-wet. The India ink dries permanently. So archival quality, but it dries all the way. And so that's the only difference. But if you don't have this, don't worry. If you've got watercolor, if you've got gouache, if you've got paint, honestly, if you've got markers, anything that's going to be a color that you can then lay black ink on top of it, you're gonna be good to go. And I tried to keep it easy by using just a few colors. So I'm gonna be using golden yellow, aqua van dyke brown and then just black india ink and so you can use more colors if you want you can just kind of sit back and watch if you're not sure um, i'm going to be using the yellow for the flowers and then i'm going to be mixing these two babies together to make a really pretty green so i'm just going to go into it um, i am using canson cold press watercolor paper it's 140 pounds um, I like it because, so arches, I believe the big thing, and I'm about to drop knowledge as if I know, but I might be wrong. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that arches, the really expensive watercolor paper, is like actually made out of cotton, which is where Canson is not. And so that's the thing, is the substrate of what the paper is made out of is less quality. However, I've tried so many types of paper, and I just love Canson cold press. Like, I come back to it all the time. So I'm working in a pad right here. I have a little uh, just scrap piece over here so I can show you colors or to get excess off my brush. Um, I'm using two TPL brushes. And I can honestly say like I had never noticed differences between brushes before. Like all of them were just kind of the same, especially as I was first learning and just getting a hold on to handling a brush. Um, and then Peggy came out with her brushes and she sent me some. And honestly, like I know I have no credibility because I love Peggy so dearly and we're really good friends. Um, but it was the first time I actually noticed a difference with a brush. Um, I like that they snap back into their point really well. Um, they hold a lot of water. I like that they're synthetic and or uh, sorry, are they natural synthetic, Peggy? Uh, just never mind. They're great. Go read about them on her site. Hundred <laughs> percent synthetic. Great. So they're wonderful. I really like them. I like them so much that I have. Oh, I can't grab it without knocking things down. But I have a whole bin of them. I'm using a six and a ten, and then I'm also going to be using a nib for a nib holder and nib um, for the black ink to do line work on top. You could just use a pen if you wanted. The reason I chose this is because on video, this line is a little bit darker and it's easier to see. And so I wanted to make sure you could see what I'm doing. And then if you're uncomfortable just going down with paint, um, I have my <laughs> little nub of a pencil left and you're very welcome. If you just wanna make a sketch to know where you're going, you can do that, um, but I'm just gonna get into it. I have a plastic coated palette over here for mixing paint on. These are really awesome. However, they're not very environmentally friendly. So I try to only use them when I'm using mediums that cannot be washed off. So if I'm using watercolor, I'm not gonna use this thing because watercolor is so easy to wash off of any surface. But especially when I'm using acrylic gouache, I'm here in the desert, paint dries so quickly um, and it can really be wasteful for me, or not wasteful, it's not wasteful, but it's just a pain in the ass for me to have to try and scrape paint off and everything. So. Um, I like these, and also with mediums that dry all the way, you can layer, layer, layer on top, and you can get a lot out of one sheet. 
I have paper towel. Um, again, like Eunice showed, you can use a microfiber cloth or a cotton cloth that you wash. You can use paper towel. I use these as much as I can. Like I'm gonna get another month or two out of these guys before I have to um, switch them out. Uh, water, paper, paint, brushes. Okay, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna start with my yellow. As you're starting, I just want to bump. Hey, it's me, Peggy. Um, bump in here and ask you some questions that just came in. Uh, will rough paper work or hot press? I don't have cold press paper. You're going to be just fine with whatever you've got. You might notice that what you see happening for my paper on screen might not mimic what's happening to your paper if it's different. But this is casual. This is um, there aren't going to be any technique like real techniques here where you need a specific set of materials to achieve it. It's really just whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, so yeah, you're gonna be good. And then a question, um, I think that you were referencing a material when this came in. Is it the Heritage or Montville Hansen paper? This. Excel what is that, huh? Oh, oh my gosh, I just knocked everything down. Canson, watercolor, aquarel, 140 pound sold everywhere. There we go. Um, I hope that was what that person was asking. Sorry if it's not. Okay, so I wet my brush a little bit. I'm starting out with my 10 because I'm going to paint my big flower blobs first. And um, this is already liquid, so I don't have to mix here. I'm just going to soak some up on my brush. And now I'm just going to do a quick mental check. My vase is going to be like right here. It's going to be about um, not quite half of the height. So like this, and then I want my bouquet to go up here. So my first bloom, I'm just gonna go in. Like you really don't need to worry about it. And flowers, you know, they're their silhouettes are imperfect. And I'm not even worried about value. I'm not worried about leaving white space. I just want a blob where that flower is gonna be. And then I'm gonna use my ink and pen to carve out all the flower shapes and all the values that we're gonna need to recognize it as a flower. Go over here, we'll do a little friend. He'll be about the same size, but facing the side. So do you see how, even though these are just two blobs, I'm trying to change the shape here so that I can see that this one is aiming off to the side. And if you are unfamiliar with painting flowers or looking at flowers and you don't know what they look like, just try and put a blob down and then see what you can carve out with the ink. Um, and if you're a perfectionist and this is freaking you out because you don't know where we're going and you don't know what it's gonna look like, Oh, take a deep breath because perfectionism is a thief of all the good things. It really, really is. And you learn better when you just go for it. Um, your inner creative is happier when you just go for it. And you learn to trust yourself better when you get uncomfortable. So I just put a tiny guy here. And now I'm thinking of, um, so these, these three flowers are going to be similar in type. I've got like a tinier one here, and then I'm making like a filler flower that's gonna have some direction to it. And I know since these are all just yellow blobs right now, it's not looking like much, but it'll turn into magic. But I basically just want a variety of shapes. I want those shapes to be facing a variety of directions. And with flowers especially, I like them to feel like they're kind of coming out. So um, the rest of the coming out will happen with the leaves. But for now, I'm gonna let that stay and let's move on to the leaves. Hey, it's me, Peggy. Um, hey, it's quick, me, Dylan. <laughs> quick question. Would you mind as you're using them to repeat the colors that you're using? Sure. This first one is golden yellow and I just put out a little bit of aqua and I'm about to put out the Van Dyke brown and those are the only colors I'm using and then I just have black ink. And let me show you. So the aqua that I just put out onto my palette is really like a phthalo green. It's a very, very cool emerald green color. And then the Van Dyke brown is brown. And if I mix those two together, I'm going to get a really, really beautiful emerald darky teal perylene green. You see that? It's like a gemstone color. And so I really like mixing those to tone that down and it got a little bit dark so um 
I'm going to add in a touch more aqua. And then I'm actually going to add in a little bit of yellow too to warm it up just a little bit. Boop. And it's imperfect here. Like it's just Saturday morning for me. You know, I don't need to show up and blow everyone's mind. It's just, just enjoy it. Just find some joy, you know, feel, feel the paint on your brush. Like I really love the fat, what I like using about these is that like, it's so liquid, but it's such a punch of color. Like take time to enjoy those things while you're, while you're taking risks and while you're being creative. Um, so let's see what color I've got. Yeah, that's good. Um, while these are still drying, I'm actually going to water down this color a lot and I'm going to work on the vase I'm going to do is going to be a clear vase. So you're going to see the stems through it. And I just want to paint some like iridescent green to get some of that glass in there just so that I can start hinting at that. And that will give these more time to dry before I get in and add leaves above. And one of the best tips I can give you as a painter um, is to let the strokes lie as they are. So for instance, I did two quick upstrokes and my tendency before would have been to then go over these again to clean them up. But this, these little marks, these expressive marks have so much character. And if you try to perfect them and you try to overwork them, um, you just kind of lose a little bit of the magic. So those shapes should be enough. I'm gonna also use my black ink later to help add a few hard lines. But for right now, I think that that's a really nice way to just like hint at that glass. And just to make it more fun, I might do like another dot of yellow just to bring that back in. Okay, let's get in with the leaves. How are people doing? How's everyone doing out there? Dylan, it's really looking nice. <laughs> Laura, you are an earth angel. Thank you so much. Okay, Your I, art eye. I didn't know what was just going to happen. All I know is Laura's been sitting here <laughs> something. <laughs> um, so what I'm about to do is I'm about to make some lines that will represent where the veins of the leaves are going to go, where the stems of the leaves and the direction that they'll be facing. And so I need a really fine point. Um, I switched over to my size six and I can, I don't know if you can see, but you can just kind of tell that the brush is loaded right now. Like the tip doesn't look very fine because there's like so much water. And so if I tried my best to do a really fine line and with how shaky my hands are right now, there's a chance it's gonna, well, of course it didn't prove my point, but there's a chance it would have been blobbier. So sometimes when my brush looks really loaded like that, I'll just touch the tip to a paper towel just to take some of that excess off so that I can get that tip back. And then I feel like I have more control without worrying that it's gonna like blob out. So the first one I want to go wildly off the page to the right. So, um, it's like a balance of being thoughtful, but then once you make your decision, being quick and sure about it. So I'm going to want it to come between these and go out this way. And again, like if it's, that's not quite the shape I wanted, but if I go over it a second time, it looks, then it looks like a mistake. Whereas if I just leave it and it's like, wow, that's what she intended to do. Another trick to keep your tip uh, nice and pointed while you're painting is, so while I'm going through the paint here, I'm kind of twirling my brush. And just that twirl will help kind of bring that point back as well. And I don't have a, a rule here. I'm just looking at the overall composition and imagining, you know, I don't want it to look like a spider or a firework where everything is coming out in every direction. You know, I have this really long one over here. And so whatever's gonna be over here, I wanna be shorter to like count or balance that. Ooh, I'm tempted to see, I'm super tempted to put one right there, but then we've got the like, it's kind of even on four sides and it might make that weird radius. So I'm just going to leave it for now because I'm not sure. And let's go ahead and add some vases or some stems coming down in the vase here. Nothing perfect, just 
And you're welcome to use um, different greens, you know, a variety of greens. If you know my work, it's just, I like um, to keep my palette pretty minimal and let the lines and the bold uh, shapes and their juxtaposition kind of set everything off. All right, let's add some leaves to these spindly little stems. So with the leaves, um, I'm going to be putting all my ink details in the flowers. And so the leaves are sort of, they need to fall to the background while also really supporting the bouquet. And so to do that, I'm going to make the leaf shapes, I'm gonna allow them to be a little bit more expressive and not quite perfect and filled like the flowers because I don't need to worry about having a canvas to put um, ink work on. It's really just, I need the viewer when they look at this to just understand that this is wild foliage. And I'm not even imagining a certain type of leaf, like what, what kind of plant looks like that? But you get it, your brain gets it. And the, the roughness of it helps your brain not focus on it so much. It's like, okay, I got it. Those are, those are leaves, that's foliage. What else is going on in this? And again, I'm being expressive, but I'm still being thoughtful before the brush goes down to make sure that I want a shape to be where I'm considering. Peggy, this is the quietest you've ever been on any phone call I've ever had with you, and it's a little <laughs> bit unnerving. I know, I'm sorry, and I know that you said to go ahead and just chime chime in, but I think that we're all in a meditative, like, haze glaze. Okay, yeah, all I'm right, really that's cool. Not, not getting my art supplies so that I could be doing this too with you. <laughs> well, if only you had some kind of heads up that this event was coming and that it was gonna be really <laughs> awesome, you know, too bad. I've written down a couple of words into my uh, vocabulary database that you've said. Oh, anything good? Guys, so Laura was really impressed yesterday. I admitted that I made a database to record new vocabulary words as I come across them. And um, Laura was super into that. Laura, do you want to share any words that you've jotted? Well, I mean, it's more of a phrase of blob out. I really like okay. And I, I, I understand the definition, I think, but I wanted to like be able to use it in context appropriately. Okay. I also, I, it, most of your speaking about blobs was my favorite. <laughs> Blobbier. Blobbier. Um, so this little strokey guy right here, I just want to explain my thinking behind that. I am aware of this you know, part of the thing is, is like, I'm a digital illustrator, which means like, I am not a fine artist. I don't paint on paper. And then that painting is well composed and final. Anything that I make on paper gets scanned in and altered and finished in Photoshop. And so um, why did I say that? Why did I? Oh, so anyway, so, um, so I know part of it is that this is off center. And so ignoring that, like, I can just tell that like, there's a weight, something needed to be counter, counterbalanced right here, but I don't want to add another flower. And again, if I added another thing of leaves right here, do you see how it would kind of be an X? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I don't want it to be so symmetrical. I like the asymmetrical feel. And so I needed something heavier down here to help weigh it down. And so this one stroke um, of this darker color not only adds in some value, but it just helps weigh down this side of um, this corner of the illustration and helps kind of counterbalance this really heavy and dark um, guy that's going up there. And so I am, that was really an example of me letting my intuition go because I could feel, you know, my hand wanted to do this, but my brain knew that that wasn't quite right. And then I just saw that opportunity to add that there. And so, and it worked out. It doesn't always work out, but that's the thinking behind it. Um, so I like these spindly leaves. I have a tendency to add too much. And so I really want to make sure I don't do that. The only thing is, um, I do want to connect a little bit of a stem with this flower here, just so that he's not totally floating. I'm just going to do that. And that looks good. I think we're ready to start adding line work. So as I said, um, for line work, I'm going to be using this nib and some ink, I'm going to be dipping it in there. And I actually, I've got a Skillshare class on using ink and I show how to use this guy. 
but um, cheat code for you, just use it, dip it in the ink and drag it across the paper and see how it goes. Like, I think we have a tendency, like as artists, we just want to try things, but then our brains kick in and they're like, no, we need to consult an expert before I use this. And it's like, you, your brain can learn things just by you doing them without other people telling you. So just try it um, and just see, like I watched a lot of tutorials on these and they made it seem so much harder and so scary. And then finally I saw a YouTube video where the woman was like, she didn't know what the nib was. She didn't know what it was called, but she was using it. And that's the whole point. Like just use it and see how it goes. So I'm going to twist the cap off of my black ink. I'm going to put him over here and I'm just going to, so the only tip I have is to try and not dip it, like try not to get ink all over this thing because then you're going to get ink on your hand. But if you do, you can wash it off and it's not a big deal. So I'm going to try and dip and just go at least past the opening in the nib. I can do a test over here. And we're good. And I've drawn a lot of flowers, so I feel more comfortable carving them out. But if this is your very first time and you're really nervous about it, go ahead and pull up just a little um, reference photo just to look at. And the nice thing is, is do you see how my hand is coming through that? Oh well, things happen. I'm left-handed and I'm messy. Um, this flower, like, I don't want there to be too many lines to weigh it down. I just want there to be enough to help explain the flower shape. We've got some of these smaller petals in here in the center. Question, <clears throat> hello. Uh, question <laughs> for Dylan. <laughs> what type of ink are you using again? This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India ink. And the India ink means that it is archival. So um, in sunlight and over time, it will hold up better than non-archival inks. Um, but unlike Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Watercolor and their Hydrus line, which by the way, Radiant Watercolor is not archival, but um, those ones can be re-wet. The India ink dries all the way. Um, so this guy just facing the front, that's gonna be, all I need from him. But now this one off to the side um, is going to be a little bit different. So whenever a flower is off to the side, I like to draw whatever petal is up front that's blocking me from the center. And then I can go ahead and find where those stamens need to be. And in as least dirty of a way possible, for whatever reason, the stamens are my favorite part of the flower to draw. Um, they just have so much character, just that little sprightly burst and I have really see this is why I work in Photoshop because in Photoshop I can just clean all that up recenter remove everything yeah we like I, it we, I like it we it, prefer it it looks cool <laughs> it adds some character to it in a good way okay all right yeah I know <laughs> that validation for me but I'm here to tell you that it looks good. Um, Dylan, what is the advantage of using a nib and ink over a monoline pen? I am apparently just too dumb to use those pens. Um, do you know if you go to the, oh my gosh, what, the Micron site, they actually say that you're supposed to hold the pen like perfectly up and down. I don't know what kind of monster draws that way. Sorry if you draw that. Sorry if you draw that way. That's totally acceptable, and you're welcome here. Um, but I don't do that. I'm going to grab some of my model lines. I just got up to grab them. Um, so I do have. I'll show you which microns I do like. Okay. So I do have some. I've got these um, Faber Castell Pit Artist pens. I do like these better than microns. Um, they're an archival. Um, I believe. Um, it's India ink and then um, I think they're pretty similar to microns and they just seem to like um, so when I draw you know I'm coming in at like a 45 degree angle and it just really is so so unsatisfying to me when the line ekes out when you use a brand new pen and it feels like it's 15 years old that totally totally sucks the joy out of it for me 
I like feeling like I've got enough ink to do what I need to do. Um, so I do like the Micron PNs and they do not have as fine of a tip. You're not going to be able to go down to the 0.005 or whatever. Um, but you still get a really, of course, this one's going to be kind of dry, but even still, I'm able to draw on the side and I'm able to keep my line up. Whereas with regular microns, I'm just not able really to do that. So it's just your own preference. Um, oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe I am. What is Peggy? What's Issa's last name? What is her? Um, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Of Poppy and, oh my gosh, Poppy and Grace Co. Grace Poppy Co. What is her handle? Uh, Poppy and Gray Co. Thank you. So she uses microns and she uses um, these monoline pens all the time. And for her, when you watch her work, she works like she's much more, um, it feels more zen and closer and slower. And so for her style, that pen really works. Um, but for me, I'm just a little bit quicker, a little bit cruder, I guess. And I want to have a bold line there. I do not want the line to wimp out. And then if I have to go over it again, then it gives it this overlooked work, or overworked look, and I really don't like that. So that's why I prefer the pen and nib. And also, I really love the character of line I'm able to get. Um, like you can see right here, this downstroke is a lot thicker than where I was a little bit um, lighter on the ink there. And that variation in line weight really gives it a lot of energy and is much more exciting to me. Um, I also like that this can make me a little bit messy in a way that I like that looks like kind of artistic to me. Um, so my quick lines um, just might look a little bit, I don't know, fancier. Um, so is this dry yet? Please, like normally in the desert, this stuff is dry all the time, except for when you're on a video and trying to show people things. Um, so this guy is a little bit different. He's kind of a closed up flower. So I'm gonna, those are his little petals hugging and holding him all in. I'm trying to decide if I wanna do stamens on this one or not. This may be just a few. Is anybody eating any good snacks right now? That's what I wanna know. I just had uh, my signature breakfast sandwich. Well, lay it on us. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Well, it's uh, bacon, which like three pieces. <clears throat> Sorry if there's anybody that's a vegan, but I'm just going to tell you, I make three pieces. So I can cut <laughs> off the fat and then feed it to the dog. And then I eat the rest <laughs> of it with two fried eggs on two pieces of really good buttermilk bread with sriracha. In oh, dang. That sounds amazing. Also, I like that you said you feed it to the dog as if you only have one. <laughs> I do. She doesn't feed it to Lucy because Lucy doesn't need to have any more fat to eat. Did Just, anyone else in the chat say things that yeah, they're eating? Yeah. So we have, let's see, <clears throat> we were doing this yesterday. I, we showed Dylan all of the snacks that we got for a road trip. And I really thought that she was so bored, but she was like way more into it. Um, <laughs> Claire says, sorry guys, my throat. <clears> throat> um, Claire says, is gin and tonic considered a snack? <laughs> Hell yes, it is. It's a I'm great snack. Go ahead and assume that you're not in the West Coast at all right now. <laughs> um, don't judge her. She can have a gin and tonic at whatever time it is. You know what? It is pride. There we go. Uh, <laughs> How dare I see I? you out there. Don't judge her. Actually. Oh my gosh. Emily says, I baked oatmeal cookies a few days ago and snacked on those. <gasps> I'm super jealous. Wait, do they have raisins in them or not? This is, I need her to answer back ASAP. This okay, is very I important. Too, but I also want to know if they have chocolate chips, maybe. Sounds like they're good. Oh, that's. <laughs> What's wrong with just oatmeal? There's, well, no, I think the reason why is because oatmeal. do, can we like almost all of us agree that having raisins in the cookie is a mistake. You're about to get pushed back. There's at least yeah. four people in this chat right now that will not eat a cookie without raisins in it. Ooh, so get ready. Opinion. Peggy's got her opinion. Okay, it's I do. A fact. But <laughs> my, my food opinions are fact. I'm very picky. Um, Stephanie's drinking a Red Bull because it gives her her creative wings. <laughs> Tiffany, do you like, okay, so I just want to point out, I've dipped my hand in this paint 
like at least four or five times in the last minute. Have I moved it out of the way? No, I just keep doing it. Okay, so. am I? So I'm glad that you also do this. Why is it that we put the things that are messiest on the side of our dominant hand? Because I'm not going to reach over to this side and then have it drippy drop, you know? Oh, you're fair, you're fair, you're fair. All right, and then we have Tiffany um, had a cherry tomato. One, one? single cherry tomato, fresh, yes. but freshly picked from the garden. Oh, <gasps> okay, okay. That that's that's good. beautiful. That's a great day. And then some chips and a chocolate chip cookie. I'm super jealous of the cookie. Mm -hmm. uh, microwave. I don't even know what this is. Mug Pluot Crisp. Is Pluot? Am I saying it right? I don't know. Mug she said mug, though, because sometimes people make mug cakes. Maybe it's a type of cake. Oh, interesting, 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 interesting. So all I'm doing now, um, I just am adding some more lines that not only help with value. So um, by adding these lines in various places, I was able to show that these are kind of little cups. And in real life, it might be the reverse that these dark, the insides would be darker and the outsides might be catching the light. But just from experience and from what I felt this piece needed, I really, I didn't want to um, junk up where the stamens were. And so just by adding, and notice how their directions differ based on what direction the flower is going. Um, that just has, helps, helps add some form and some life to it. And you can see here what I mean with the nib, my lines get kind of messy and, um, but it just looks cool, I guess. Um, and so that looks great. And then I'm also, I said I wasn't going to add any things for the leaves, but in just a few places, I'm just gonna add some stripes on them just cause I really, that's just kind of my thing. I think stripes add a lot of cool flair. Sorry to cut off the snack talk. Has anybody else come in with snacks? Can you mute? No. Uh, let me tell you that it's Jennifer. Can you please go back? Oh yeah. Jennifer is cycling through raspberry gum, which I, <laughs> I thought you would appreciate because you love what raspberry. What does she mean cycling through? I do love raspberry. Oh, that's an explanation. Okay, I'm on a cycle of chewing gum until it loses its raspberry flavor and then take another one. <laughs> I love it. I do too. I kind of like that. I like that like idea of I'm going to marathon chew this gum and no one's going <laughs> to stop me. Yeah, well, you get it. You live your freaking life. That's great. I'm oh, trying to find the answer no about raise. No, this is just an opinion because it was from Emily. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, okay. No, no raisins or chocolate chips because she decided to bake cookies without going to the store first. Both are valid bits to add though. Uh, I mean, that was nice of you to be inclusive, but you're, that's not true. Raisins are weird, and chocolate <laughs> chips would totally overpower the delicate oatmeal flavor. Oh, see, but I it's disagree. so. I love a chocolate chip and an oatmeal cookie. Well, somebody up well, is eating chocolate chip vegan gluten free cookies straight up. I know you guys are all eating cookies, and I don't have any, but I did have Pop Tarts, which is worse. So. Also, I just wanted to add that yesterday after um, Peggy and Laura gave me my own preview of their snacks that they bought for an upcoming trip. I then had to go grocery shopping and I bought like half the things that they showed me that they had. So, um, yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, and I think it's coming to an end. A few extra things you could add, which are kind of, they don't always work out. Let's see how it goes. We could do, should I add splatters or should I not? Ooh, actually one thing I want to do, I just want to add just the tiniest a little bit for the vase here to show the top of that vase. Just a few hard lines and then I'm gonna draw one, ooh, do I wanna do one line for the water line or do I wanna, yeah, I do. And there you have it. You have some blooms in a vase. So if you're just curious what I would do with this as an illustrator, um, I would bring this into Photoshop and what I would do is I would clean it up and then I would probably, hmm, you wanna turn things into either a placement design or a repeat. So a placement design is like a greeting card design. It's something that's centered, it doesn't um, repeat in all directions, it doesn't cover a big surface necessarily. And so placement designs, it could just be this base or I could add, um, if I brought this into Photoshop, I might be able to finish this leaf and then I could add, this would be a nice spot to add some lettering that said like, have a lovely birthday or something. 
or um, with this space that I had right here, I could bring in a tag, a little cute tag that's coming off and that could say for the birthday girl or something and it could turn into a birthday card. Um, I could also just turn like, have this just be a standalone bouquet design and then create a repeat, a repeating pattern that coordinates with it. So maybe I would pull out these um, tall flowers and make a whole floral repeat with those guys. Or maybe I would just make a repeat with these leaves. And then I have a set of two designs that work together, one placement and one repeat. And then I would add those to my portfolio. So Peggy, are there any more questions before I finish up? No, you are good. This is beautiful. Thank you so much much. Everybody's really excited about this one. Thank you guys. And thank you, Peggy, for this beautiful opportunity. It's so, so incredibly important. And this is coming from a person who like is a cat, an elderly cat of a human. I don't like other people. I don't do a lot of things. I like to sleep a lot. But if there's anything that this time has taught us, it's that we truly, whether we like it or not, we need each other. And right now with a pandemic, we can't be with each other um, physically. Um, at least in the States, I know other countries are, have made a lot more progress than us because we're stupid and selfish and don't believe in science here. Um, but we need each other. I'm so glad that you guys showed up and decided to not cancel, to not back out and be like, actually, I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to do this. I'll go watch Netflix. Um, showing up for your creativity is difficult, even when you just want to make some messy flowers on your paper. So I'm so gl glad you're here. I'm so grateful that you're a creative and thank you.